The homepage of your site is by far the most visited page of the website. So it's really important to make sure that when people land up on it, not only do you retain them, but you start working to convert them into a paying customer. Too often I'm seeing people try and push boundaries, create new conventions, and just create that wow factor, which is actually more damaging than good. Whether you are a beginner or whether you've been building websites for a little while now, what I'm gonna share with you can really help you and act as a guide for being able to create websites that convert. However, the structure, it doesn't work for every single homepage, but it does work for most. So whether you're a local based business, service based business, or even a small product based business, this type of template is going to work very, very well. However, if you're e-commerce or maybe SaaS based, it doesn't work as well, but there are a lot of elements that you can take from this and use in pretty much any homepage design. Honestly, it's just going to give you a really solid foundation for building any type of homepage. It certainly worked well for me, it's worked well for my clients, so I'm pretty confident it's going to work well for you as well. So we're going to work through how to actually structure a homepage and what key elements you need to include to really maximize the success of a website. We're also gonna be including some key web design principles like white space, consistency, focal points, hierarchy, okay? All of these things that really help build a very visually appealing, well-structured, great user experience website. Here we have our homepage. Okay, we're gonna start at the top and we're gonna work our way down. And I'm just gonna, you can see a lot of tags and, and lines coming into the diagram. And I'm just gonna break that down so you can really start to appreciate what homepages need to include and for what reason. So when people land up on your site and they see everything uh, in that window, you need to answer three questions really, really quickly. Okay, humans are very impatient. They wanna know that they're on the right page and they're on the right place pretty quick before they go back to Google and just look for the next potential business. So these three things are who are you, what you do, and how you can help. Who you are is in essence your logo. That is telling people who you are, it's your brand. Okay, what you do, you would utilize that within your main heading. Okay, in this main heading, typically you, you use it to explain what your value proposition is or what transformation that it is that you deliver. How you can help is this line here. So this is the subline. So here we've got an example. You would use our headline to explain how you help and what your unique method for getting results is. I've put unique method because you don't really want to appear as a commodity. And I think even as a web designer or if you're building a website, it's really good to know that you want to make sure that the brand that you're trying to market through said website has a unique offer. Okay, what whether their approach is unique, whether their business is unique, whether their customers are unique, whatever that whatever makes something unique you want to you know want to place that high up at the top as well we've got how do i get started and that is a call to action here so this is the star typically when people are landing you want to answer these main three things but also i think it's important if they are sticking around you want them to be able to get started uh, as easy as possible so that's why we include a call to action up here and this is this is a very com common convention these days in that you will see the headline the sub headline and the call to action with the majority of websites that you land upon there is a little trick now anyone that's interested in improving rankings with SEO and hopefully you are. There's a sneaky little way that you can implement your H1 and place your main keyword within there. Okay, now this doesn't all have to be a H1. They say off typically that your H1 needs to be your main prominent heading on a page. Now I disagree. There's a way that you can have your H1 at the very top, but style it so it's nice and small. So it's a bit more discreet. And then the emphasis and the focal kind of point on the text is here. And we'll touch on hierarchy a little bit more down here, but hierarchy certainly comes into play here. Now you've got two two black boxes here. These are two web design principles that I just want to touch on. First of all is the focal point. You, you have a focal point on any page and focal points exist in basically everywhere. It exists in magazines, it exists in architecture, interior design, photography. Okay. And it also works within web design. So here in this instance, you know, we've got an image here. It's over to the right and that kind of, that is what's going to draw people's attention first. Okay. So it really helps if the image supports the, the text over on the left hand side. So it's supports who you are, what you do, and how you help. Um, this, for example, in this instance, it's just a random image just because this is kind of a low fidelity wireframe. So here we've got our focal points. Focal points are really important. And also we've got white space. Now white space is super, super important too, or you could call it negative space. And this is just space where nothing exists. Okay, it doesn't have to be white. You don't have to have the background to be white. If you were building a dark site, you could have the background to be dark or you can have a color. But in essence, it's just creating space between components. So creating space between this text and the block underneath. Your white space is really important because it allows the user to absorb the information that's in front of them without overwhelming them. You know, if this was all squashed together and this stuff was all squashed up here and so on and so on, you'd just be like, what do I look at? And that's 
that that's a problem if you're providing too much information that isn't separated by white space and it doesn't flow very well okay you, you're going to have problems because people are going to be overwhelmed when they land on site and they are just going to leave so yeah we've got white space and having a focal point on your website which are two key principles there that are going to help you build a nice website got also mistakes that people make within the hero section and that is creating sliders okay there's nothing wrong with having for example a background image that works on a carousel and the the image just keeps uh, cycling through as long as the headline and the subtext and the call to action remains the same if you have revolving text and you have revolving images you're not being clear about what it is that you are offering you're not being clear about what you can do to help the individual that's landed upon the site not only that they're not going to pay too much attention to, to it you want them to read this you want them to absorb that and then you want them to either take action or continue scrolling down to learn more if you have a carousel that's just flicking through with multiple random different messages that's not going to be clear and it's going to be overwhelming so that's my piece of advice there is try not to use carousels that change the text and change the images because it's just you're not going to give a clear message now scrolling down we've got our next block now we've got at the top they need to answer these three questions you've got your headline your value proposition etc etc next you want to go straight in with what your service offering is and or what the solution to the problem is okay now your customers are going to have a problem and they're looking for a solution Solution and you are that solution so it really makes sense to have that quite high up now you're touching on it up here but you're going into a lot more detail down here okay, you want to highlight in this area to primary pain point that your product is solving so I've put the highlight the primary pain point your problem is solving what I mean by that is highlight the pain point your solution is solving okay so there's a bit of a mistake there so people need to know quickly what problem you are solving otherwise they'll leave okay and we can do that here alternatively they want to see your products and quickly decide if they should stay. So what I mean by this is depending on the site, if you are using an e-commerce site, for example, okay, and you're selling products or you are a business that solves a problem through a variety or just a few products, you wanna make sure that those products are high up here. So you could swap this block out for individual images of your products along with some text that highlights the, the solution to the problem. So hopefully that's making sense and you're following along. We've also got here a paragraph of text. We've got some positive outcomes. So we're just highlighting what additional positive outcomes come of your solution and then we've got a call to action so we can allow the user to learn more about the company or learn more about the solution that would totally be up to you so another principle that we've got here is hierarchy now hierarchy is super important and as I said it, it also works up here but hierarchy is just creating a level of authority between your headings and your text okay what is it you want people to look at so titles have a higher hierarchy level than say a subtitle and a subtitle has a higher hierarchy level than paragraph text okay so it kind of works on a top-down hierarchy if the title was smaller than the text then the text would be drawing more attention than the title and that hierarchy wouldn't quite work so hierarchy is super important in web design because without even realizing it you're drawing people's attention to certain areas and the way that we do that is through creating hierarchy hierarchy works really really well mostly in paragraphs of text headings and titles and things like that so yeah just bear that in mind that hierarchy is super super important and, and text is way that we're able to display hierarchy now over on the left hand side we've got we've got a video here now you might be wanting to put an image in there which if that's all you have to work with that's fine but video does work really really well in fact you know pages with video on them do increase conversions by over 80 percent okay they also positively impact your google rankings now a lot of people don't know this um but i mean i've run countless experiments myself and a lot of our websites that are ranking high on google they have video on the page so if you can in include video on your page you're going to positively impact the Google rankings and you're going to positively increase the chances of people converting, signing up to your product, buying from you, etc., etc. Okay, and that's that's essentially what you as a, as a website owner wants from your website. So yeah, go with video over imagery, but if you don't have video, then your fallback would be an, an image here. Cool, and now a mistake here is using large paragraphs. Now you can see here that within our hierarchy, we've got, got a short title, short subtitle, a short paragraph of text, and then some bullet points. Okay, this is all really nice and condensed, and I'm gonna use the word over underwhelming. So it's not, it's not overwhelming you, 
when you're looking at this. It's not like, oh my God, there's so much text. And what I mean by this, I've got an example. So I've just got two random blocks here. And what I mean by this is paragraph one and paragraph two have two very large blocks of text. And now ultimately people just won't read this. You might be trying to shoehorn large paragraphs of text in for SEO purposes, which I understand that you need to have a certain amount of text on your page, but you need to be a bit smarter about how you're laying this out. Don't be lazy and use large paragraphs of text like this because people just won't read it. Okay, there, are, there are ways that you can create smaller paragraphs, but you could use accordions. Okay, there are, there are ways to ultimately hide text in like collapsible fields, just so you've got the same amount of content in there from an SEO standpoint, but you're not relying on it from a visual design standpoint use short paragraphs and also you can see here I've gotten an emoji okay emojis are great because it's kind of like a pattern interrupt it draws people's attention to it it means that they might read it creates intrigue and things like that so there's a nice little tip there uh, for including emojis on on the site and we certainly use that within our own agency website and it's working really really well okay so we've got the solution to the problem and then next we've got the benefits of the service offering okay so what are the benefits of the the product or the service that you are selling. Okay, a lot of people go wrong here and they start talking about the features. No one cares about that, okay? Certainly not at this point. Remember this is a structure and we're taking someone on a journey. We've had them land upon the top and they're starting to scroll down to learn more and learn more about your solution and how it helps them. And then you're gonna talk about like three main benefits that people typically receive when they use your product or service. Okay, so this is really easy. You just have one, two, and three benefits. Okay, so highlight how the user benefits from this service. Include imagery or iconography, aka icons, to really kind of create pattern interrupts, create visual appeal, and but have it relate to the benefit that it's talking about at that time. So we've got benefits. Next, we've got testimonials, reviews, and a, a series of trust building. Okay, now this, is, a lot of people forget about this. Okay, they think, oh, well, we don't have any reviews. Now, if you don't have any, then so be it. But I would definitely work to get some as soon as you possibly can because it really does help build trust. Okay, over 60% of consumers will take action after seeing a positive review or trust from a familiar company. So there's two ways that you can do this. We can have reviews and we can have logos from companies that we've worked with in the past okay to help build trust now the more well-known these companies are better make sure that you include any of the most well-known companies that you are working with if you're a small business and you're local okay make sure that you're utilizing local logos or local business logos because although people might not know what they are on a national scale on a local scale people might recognize those local businesses okay and it's going to build trust that way google reviews is a very good way to to achieve this or any form of testimonial or review that you've received from from a business that you've worked with in the past i've got a mistake that people make here and that is making these up okay don't make them up okay don't make them up or fabricate them. Be sure that you're referencing a credible source of reviews or a real client testimonial. So by credible source of reviews, okay, here we're utilizing Google reviews. People have gone onto Google, they've submitted reviews and we're just pulling those in to the design. Okay, we're building, pulling that into the homepage to really build trust. And then we're also linking off to those other reviews that we have on uh, the, the Google business page. So that's that's how you would go about building trust on the website. Okay, now moving down, we then start to talk about the features. And, and I'm gonna highlight that mistake again, where people are talking about the features too early on in this journey. At this point, they don't care too much about the ins and out, the nitty gritty of the, the product or service that we are delivering. So you just wanna talk about the benefits. Okay, you talk about the benefits first, then when they are becoming more sold and invested, they're gonna scroll down, then you can start talking about what features your product, service, or solution has. Okay, then you can you can really get into the features. Now underneath the features, this is when you can hit them with a really direct call to action. Okay, so whatever call to action you want them to take, whether it is booking a call, whether it is um, submitting an email or getting in touch, calling, whatever that might be, you would really wanna hit them with a really simple direct call to action down here. Now underneath that call to action, we've got FAQs. Now, FAQs might not always exist on a homepage. Without trying to confuse you too much, this structure really works well for not only your homepage, but also internal pages as well, especially if you had an individual service page. So for us, a service page would be something like web design, that would be an individual service page. If you were, I don't know, an aesthetic doctor, something like dermal fillers, would be your individual service page. This structure still very much works because you're still taking people onto a journey. Now, if you find that you can't utilize FAQs on a homepage, certainly utilize it on a service page. 
Okay, try and utilize FAQs as much as you possibly can because it is a great way to implement more text into the website without taking up too much real estate. So remember I mentioned about those large paragraphs of text. You wanna avoid that and you wanna try and keep things you know, condensed uh, and with a very nice visual flow and utilize as much white space as you possibly can. Okay, remember less is more from a visual standpoint because you don't wanna overwhelm. So FAQs, these are answering common questions really. It allows you to answer questions that maybe you receive on a regular basis, maybe answering questions that you see on Google. It could be questions that relate to your main keyword that you're trying to rank for on Google. So I've got a mistake here. Simply making these up can be a problem if they're not relevant. A little tip is use searched for questions or common questions received by customers. So whether you're getting common questions from customers, you can implement them here. So you should be answering them at the point before they even want to get in touch. So it's going to any sort of hesitation that they have you're kind of nipping that in the bud and and making sure that you're reassuring them that you're the right fit before they even take action now you can see here we've got people also ask when you google search something and you scroll down to pe people also ask they can give you some common questions that people are asking in relation to your keyword so there might be opportunities for you to bring some of those questions in and answer them on your own website okay i'm not i'm not talking about copy and pasting them but just answer them in your own way okay and that can certainly help for SEO too. And then scrolling down, we've got the footer. Okay, I'm not gonna go into too much detail in this video about the breakdown of a footer. Ultimately, you can see here we have a very good solid foundation for a homepage. And this homepage can work on your main homepage. And as I just touched upon, it can also work from a service page level. We've got our hero section where we have our value proposition and we're, we're letting them know who we are, what we do and how we can help them very, very quickly. And also if they want to, they can get in touch. We're touching on the solution to the problem right away we are then talking about the benefits here we're, we're giving trust we're building trust and we are showing them testimonials and reviews as well as logos and when we're then touching on the features and then we're giving them a call to action and then answering any questions that they have so the structure does work very very well here we've used it a lot ourselves on our own website we've used it for a lot of our customers website it really does help increase the opportunities of anyone looking at that website to get in touch and that's the main aim the ultimately businesses want a website because they want to make more sales and it's their shop window. So when people are looking at their website, they want them to explore, they want them to have a conversation with them, they want to make sales, they want to book calls, all of those things. So that is my complete homepage layout guide. I hope you have found it valuable. Now there is an end screen coming up as well with more valuable videos for you to go and check out. If you haven't done so already, please do remember to subscribe to this channel. I would really appreciate it. And also give it a thumbs up if you really enjoyed this video. But that's it from me. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.